Wake Up War Chant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Come explore our world of coffee. Established in 2014, DeLuna Coffee is owned and operated by Ed, Courtney, and Brett Lemmix. Lifelong FSU fans and Seminole boosters, Ed, class of 79, and son, Brett, class of 2009, along with Miss Courtney, can regularly be found tailgating near the Unconquered statue. Wake up with their breakfast blend called Five Flags, named after the five flags of their city, Pensacola. Higher caffeine because of the light roast, it is their unique blend of Mexican, Colombian, and Ethiopian Yurgachev beans. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram. From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Coffee's for closers only. Now here's Warchant.com's Aslan Hunchavandi and Corey Clark. Wake up! What's up, everybody? It's Wake Up Warchant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. DeLunaCoffee.com. Come explore our world of coffee. Bundle still going strong. Get you some white sands. Get you that tumbler. Good gosh. All of it over at DeLunaCoffee.com. If you're listening to us on YouTube, sweet, sweet, sweet. Hit the thumbs up, indicating that you like this video. Mm. Or if, I mean, if you don't, I mean, if you like Corey, if you like Florida State, hit the thumbs up. If you like the Luna Coffee, hit the thumbs up. Just hit the thumbs up, everybody. Warchant.com remains the ultimate symbol of sports source. Promo code is Warchant30. Everything from practice, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, up on the website. They're off Tuesday. We're not off. Corey Clark's here, everybody. What's up? What's up, Corey Clark? What's up, man? How are you doing? You doing all right? You got that kitchen all fixed? Something like that. It's just it's never going to end, but uh, we got a good good foundation set up. My buddy flew down from Pittsburgh, if people don't know, flew down Saturday and just got to work, and then Sunday got to work, and then Monday got to work, and I dropped them off at the airport, and I got a whole bunch of cabinets assembled and installed, a garbage disposal installed, a bunch of trim put around, uh, these new closets I got framed up. He did a whole mm. heck of a lot. From That's Pittsburgh, a good buddy. Down. Yeah. That's a good buddy, yeah. yeah not, not, pretty solid. Pretty solid. All right, Corey, uh, we're going to do Renegade Express, I think, later on in the week. I have not posted the thread yet. I'm going to tag uh, our subscriber by the name of Japanol. I don't know if he's if it's Japanol, like Japan with O-L-E on the end of it, right. but it's J-A-P-A and then uppercase N-O-L-E. But nonetheless, he's from Sunnyvale, California. He wanted to know how to post a question for what he calls the Pony Express on Wake Up War Chant. Mm, okay. I'm, I'm going to tag you in the post, big guy, Pete. And uh, you should be able to uh, find your way through there, and we'll take your questions. Uh, but again, Florida State's off Tuesday. They'll be back at it Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. If I'm not mistaken, right, Corey? I don't have the schedule in front of me, which I should know these things. Apologize. Yeah, I think the schedule, the tentative schedule is, yeah, they're off today, Tuesday. They practice Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Thursday and Friday, probably out of town. That hasn't been officially made official. And then Saturday, they're supposed to have a scrimmage. Mm-hmm. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, also, for the folks that can't make it to Tallahassee for the funeral services for Coach Bobby Bowden, it will be streamed on Seminoles.com. That will be the Saturday service, the funeral service at the Tucker Civic Center. Uh, again, Friday, he will lie in repose at Doe Campbell Sta- or Sorry, the Moore Center, uh, and that is open to the public. So we won't be able to film it, but I think we can grab a copy of it. We'll have it up on the YouTube site. So. Um, that's going on as well. We'll keep you folks updated if anything changes on and that. And I think frame. they've announced that Dion, uh, Charlie Ward, and Warwick Dunn are at least going to be three of the speakers. I don't know if Ooh. there'll be more. You have to assume there will be, like a you know somebody that coached with them or a, a family member. But uh, those three uh, are, are supposed to be uh, speaking on Saturday. Really curious to see what the the sort of the mood and the atmosphere is going to be because I know you, you mentioned the sadness that you felt not not. It wasn't a tragedy. I mean, again, the, the 91 years of life, just absolutely mm. amazing. Six healthy children, a beautiful wife that he loved till the very end and loved him back, and two national championships. And that name is just always going to be synonymous with being an awesome human being and being an awesome football coach. It's, it's incredible, man. So, like, I, 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 I never had to deal with real serious grief, Corey. You know, you've lost your father. I sometimes get uncomfortable with the way you joke about your late father. Uh, but that's the way some people cope with some things. My buddy who was down here working on my house talked about, you know, the way he laughs when, you know, stuff seems to strike him in a bad way for whatever reason. We all have different ways of coping. Like, I haven't felt any sort of big sense of, like, I don't know, like overwhelming sadness and sorrow. But Because I'm just like, 
man, the guy killed it. He killed it in the game yeah. of life. Um, I know I'm sad for Ann. I'm sad for his children that they have to lose their father. Um, but just golly, just you couldn't really have asked for anything better if, if he's your father, if he was your husband, if he was your favorite football coach, man. So uh, I, I hope it'll be – I'm sure they're, they're going to find a nice balance. Uh, that, that lineup right there alone, Warwick, Charlie, and, and Dion, uh, those are about three different opposing, uh, differing sort of personalities. So I'm sure they're all bringing a little bit something uh, to that uh, service. So. Yeah, when, uh, and, you know, yes, it should be a celebration. You hear that a lot, a celebration of life uh, for, for many memorial service. This really will and should be a, a celebration, you would think. I don't know. It'll be sad just because it'll make us remember them and, and yeah. uh, remember those days that, you know, it'll take us back to where we were when he was saying what he said in 1988 or showing a, a clip from 1993 or something. We'll remember our dad and everything else. But I remember... Um, when when my dad passed away, I gave the eulogy. Man, you talk about that, that wasn't the easiest thing in the world to do. Um, and it was I was I, I'm very lucky that my my dad was uh, had a lot of people in his life that cared for him. And the church was uh, it wasn't a church. It was a uh, what would you call it? a funeral home? The, the it was overflowing. It was people were out the door. Um, it was really pretty incredible. But at the end, I came up just to like say the last few words, like thank you all for coming. And I'm looking, if you're so inclined, you know, my dad was a big sports fan. And when you saw a great play, when you saw, when, when your favorite team won a game or made a great play, you would cheer. And I think my dad, with the life he lived, he deserves some applause to end this. And then it became a standing ovation. That's awesome, man. It's awesome, right? And I, and I, I you know, I'm not saying that for you guys to do that with your, but it just seemed right. And it seemed the best way to celebrate my dad. And I didn't tell people to stand up. They just did it. It became an impromptu standing ovation. And that would be a really neat way to send out Bobby Bowden, too. Like, man, what? You won, man. You won. It should be a 20-minute standing ovation. But, yes, yeah, so that uh, hopefully – and I think that will be – I think that will be the tone of, of that particular service, I think. Obviously, his relationship with God will be mentioned prominently, but I also just think his his personality and his accomplishments it will it will be a celebration. Yeah, I'm sure they're gonna fire up videos on the on the jumbotron there in the Civic Center. And Seminole Productions does a really good job. I mean, really, really top notch job. I remember when Eleven retired and, and made that letter that he wrote. What was it? Carol, his wife wrote yeah. it, and they, mm -hmm. they did a fantastic yeah, that was job. Great. I'm sure they'll have different clips, you know, one showing, you know, coach. Did you being, see the one fiery. they uh, put out? Did you see the one they put out Sunday? I did not. No, I it was great. I actually video. retweeted it. I retweeted okay. it Sunday afternoon. It's really, it's like four and a half minutes. I think it's Perfect. really well put together. Okay. So they, if they, if they, if nothing else, they should show that because it's really well done. Yeah, I hope they'd probably put some sort of like gag reel together too, like just showing like all of his little quips and burns of Spurrier and just. Maybe some yeah. outtakes of him and Gene doing the uh, the Sunday Colin show. Right. Um, so yeah, yeah that's, a, that's I hope I just hope you know, obviously I think everyone's going to walk out of there just feeling so much, um, you know, just joy that again that uh, the life was so well lived, so thoroughly uh, maximized in every single sense of the uh, of living this crazy little thing we call mm -hmm. life. Uh, back to football again. They practice on Monday. Corey, you're our eyes and ears. I'm going to try to figure out a way to do my job better and actually be able to watch more extended parts of practice. I kind of just watch the first three, four periods where they let us film, and then I run around and, you know, work on that stuff. Where are we at here? We're still doing split squat stuff. Afternoon mm -hmm. is the newcomers, and some upperclassmen morning is uh, what we were assume the ones and twos, but Mike Norvell shot me down sort of. It was like, hey, hey, simmer down over there, Aslan. So right. I'm trying to create drama, which I wasn't, but, you know, it happened. Well, you were right, though. I mean, there. What what starters were working out with the our previous starters were working out in the second session? Not you know, not many. Uh, he's not going to call these guys the reserves or the third teamers. But we 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 at least going into this practice, maybe that's how they're envisioned. Uh, you know, he brought up Jaleel McRae, like that's a really good example of somebody that really hasn't done a whole lot in their career so far, and he's working out with the with the second unit. But mainly, a lot of it's freshmen and then uh, reserves is the second unit. The first unit continued to be the veterans, um, guys that have played or will probably be on the one or two deep. Um, and, uh, yeah, I, you know, it's just the, the – I'm trying to think in the first in the first session, which I think more people are interested in because that's where, that's where Travis and Milton are playing. That's where most of your receivers are. That's where your O-line is. Um, you know, Norvell mentioned Keir Thomas. I saw him again. 
he, you know, he gets you a little excited, man. Like there, there is something there to him. Um, you know, he, he, he could be a serious upgrade on that defensive line if he gets 100% healthy. You know, Ravel said after the game, after the practice on Monday, that, you know, he practiced really well on Saturday. They held him back on Sunday because he's coming back from an injury. They don't want to push it too far. And then he started flashing again on Monday when they kind of let him loose. Um, so you see him and Jermaine Johnson. There was a really cool moment. Uh, well, depending on your outlook, there was a really cool moment in uh, 11 on 11. So it's the 11 on 11 is about to start. I think Jordan Travis is the, yeah, Travis is the quarterback. Jermaine Johnson is lined up. Adam Fuller is in his ear for probably 15 seconds. Pretty uh, animated. Mm -hmm. I don't think he was necessarily telling him, you've been terrible, what are you doing? I think he was trying to inspire him. Uh, whatever he was doing, he was he was very animated. And, Jermaine, and, the, and the drill hadn't started, mind you. It's not like he had just seen Jermaine do something poor. He was just, the, the 11 on 11s were just about to start. And he was right in Jermaine Johnson's ear loudly i wouldn't say he's yelling at him because that's a negative connotation but he was he was speaking loudly imploring him <laughs> to do something i wasn't there i mean i was there but i couldn't hear it right um in literally the first play jermaine johnson beats a double team and gets a sack so that's good to see right like he beat he beat robert scott robert scott had help from the running back and jermaine johnson split those two guys and still ended up you know you call it a sack he touched your jordan travis on the back like, in a game, is he going to be able to pull him down with one hand like that? I don't know. But he got through the double team and made the play, and that was cool to see. And I think if I'm Adam Fuller, that's probably – I'm like, man, you're the best player out here. Let's go make plays. Right now, I want to see it. Let's go, whatever. And Anyway, he responded by getting a sack on the first play. In 11-on-11s, 11 they do jack squat on offense. They have just done nothing. I don't know that they've completed in three days of practice on 11-on-11. 11 11, I don't know if those two main quarterbacks have completed more than two passes total. Every single play is pull it down and run with it, or it's a run, or it's an incomplete pass. They don't. A lot of times they're not even throwing the ball. It's like they can't even get the they they can't even throw the ball because the pressure is the the pocket is just collapsed. Which a good again is a good thing and a bad thing. I I view it as good because you really need a good defensive line and you hope your offensive line gets better. But uh, yeah, it's almost as if, and I'm not saying this is what's happening. Like, they tell these quarterbacks, if your first read's not open, tuck it and run. Because now Milton had like a 25-yard run. Jordan Travis ran for a first down. Even later in the day, Chubba Purdy ran for a first down on a third down. And it's all, they're pulling it down pretty quickly. So I don't know if that's an edict, if that's something they're trying to do. But it's, uh, it's, it's very noticeable how many, how many times they complete passes in 11-on-11 11 because 11, it ain't much. Well, they're not getting time. Do we think guys aren't getting open, or is this? this well, is, I think this it's is what a, I, is this what a yeah. six and six team looks like? Is this what a seven and five team looks like? You know? Yeah, I mean, probably. And I should say this: it's not like there's a ton of plays. Like I think they run maybe they they might run nine eleven on eleven plays a scrimmage. Are you counting or, sorry, the stuff they practice. do at the beginning in the IPF? No, no, I was not. I okay. was counting. Uh, I was just counting what they did afterwards because uh, everybody, everybody saw yeah. that. Everybody saw that. They saw McKenzie's you know, less than tight spiral that he threw, but it was sure. completed. Like, I don't know. Everybody was like, oh, gosh, I wish we weren't showing this to people. And then I started second guessing. I'm like, am I putting this kid in a bad light? Like, I don't want to, you know, I I'm pretty much showing you folks everything that's going on in the window they give us. There's some stuff I'll show. Uh, I'll be a little judicious with him. Like, hey, you guys don't need to see right. that probably. Um, but people are like, oh, gosh, you know, we're going to get, you know, roasted by Miami fans on Twitter. I'm like, he completed it, though. I don't care what it looks like. Well, look, I do. It was a. Ter it was. A, it went straight up in the air. It was. It wasn't the best throw. Jakai Douglas was open by eight yards, and he had to sit and wait for it. But it, it. It wasn't. And then they went out. So that was to start practice. And then they. They went out. And I don't even. That might have been seven on a seven. I don't even know if that was eleven on eleven. But then they go out in practice, and you're like, man, that was an awful throw. Like, what are we looking at here? And then Mackenzie Milton proceeds to throw just bullets. In uh, to the in the one on ones or to open or to the his receivers against air, so it just it slipped out of his hand. That happens sometimes. It's not like he can't make that throw. It just it wasn't a great one. But I think you know what I keep coming back to when it comes to this football team is we don't know about these receivers. That's still a that's still a question mark. I think 
Pokey and Helton have had good days. Parchment, they are on a lot, mm -hmm. trying to get him better, trying to get him. And we, we'll talk about him in a second because he we got to interview him after practice. And I thought he had some really interesting things to say. And, um, and Norvell did about him. But again, like I said yesterday, you, you can tell that's that I don't want to call it a project because he's already, you know, he's already established himself, but he is a guy that they know is very important to the offense. And they make that known because Dugans and Norvell are talking to him a great deal. But I, I thought Pokey and Keyshawn had nice, they continue to do pretty well. Um, other than that, the receivers really struggle to get open, even in the one-on-ones. You know, I think, you know, I think I counted it up. They had, they did 21, one-on-ones for the folks that don't know. I'll keep explaining it. It's a receiver against a DB. That's it. And they get half the field to use. It's not like you get to run a post route all the way across the field. Yeah, You're using right. half the field, the right or the left. And I think they threw, I think they threw 20 passes and completed like maybe six or seven of them. They had a couple drops. Um, but it is really hard. It is re Knowles had two more PBUs. He also had another play that he could have intercepted. Uh, he's been really good. Um, it's just it, it's noticeable how good these DBs have been. I don't. We know the receivers need to step up. Uh, you hope one of these young guys, Darian Williamson, who's been really good in the second sessions, really good, real the the most impressive person in that building, in my opinion has been Darian Williamson uh, through the first three days because they they do all the uh, – the second session is all in the IPF, probably because it's a million degrees at, at 130 in Tallahassee, Florida in August. Um, and he's been really good. But, yeah, man, I think I, – I don't know what to make of it other than I do think the, the DBs are the strength of, of that defense, maybe the strength of the team, and the receivers have a lot of work to do. So when it comes to the struggles with an 11-on-11, 11 11, I don't think Norvell's panicked. I think this is something he expected – the, the 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 quarterbacks aren't throwing interceptions. They're not just throwing it up for grabs typically. And he kind of expected this. Uh, it's a small sample size. It's only about nine or twelve plays of a practice. And you know the receivers are going to have to step up and make plays. And and so far they haven't done a great job of doing that. But it's been three practices without pads on. What about Andrew Parchment then? Can okay. He can he help? Can he help this thing out? Can he? I mean, the, I remember somebody asking us, "What if he's a better version of Tamori and Terry, 2019?" Let's let's maybe not go there yet. But uh, what what have you been able to add up watching him play, watching the way the coaches react to his routes, uh, his reps rather, and, and what Mike Norvell had to say about him, and his actual words from Andrew Parchment himself after Monday's practice, Corey? So yeah, he he's a pretty smooth dude, man. He's a pretty smooth route runner. I, I like it. He, he in, but so he in the seven on seven, the first. They did this for the first time today in both sessions. They had seven-on-seven seven red zone, which they hadn't done before. Usually it's just seven-on-seven. Seven. Each quarterback gets three snaps from, like, the 30. This time they were actually in the red zone. So they got one from the 15, one from the 10, one from the 7. Milton threw – I think Milton threw three touch. He threw two touchdowns and one that was to the goal line. Um, so he had a nice – the, the touchdown for 15 yards out was not quite a corner route, but close to it with parchment. And he got open. He beat Brandon Moore, caught the ball. And then Brandon Moore is trying – and he caught the ball and held it up as he's going out of bounds. And Brandon Moore is trying to rip at it and can't quite get it out of his hands. So he caught a touchdown. But I'm telling you, so afterwards, we I've just – it's been noticeable that they, they yell at him. And again, doesn't necessarily mean it's always negative. They're yelling and talking to him more than any other receiver, more than any other three receivers combined, Dugans and Norvell. And so – after practice, we got to talk to Parchment. And the first thing he said was, I've never been coached this hard in my life. They coach the details more than anybody I've ever been around. And then Norvell said the same thing. And what he said, which was funny, was because Ira asked him, he's like, can you tell that your head coach used to play wide receiver? And he goes, yeah. He goes, he's the only head coach I've ever had that comes into the position room and is showing you the technique and how to do something. And Norvell even said that. He goes, you know, there's a there's there's a positive and a negative to having a head coach that played your position. Meaning, Norvell's going to be a little harder on you because he knows for sure the right technique than say if you're a linebacker. But he also said that he goes the flip side to that is Andrew really wants it and he wants to be great and he's taken coaching. So that's a good sign, man, because I think we all know. Look, he had four 100 yard games in one season for Kansas in a real conference, and the rest of the Florida State receivers combined don't have that many 100 yard games. He caught 65 passes one year. He scored seven, eight touchdowns. 
he's done it at a level that no other, none of these other Florida State receivers have done it. So you have to imagine he's a very big part of the offense, but he's got to get adjusted. He's got to get adjusted to what Florida State football is compared to Kansas. And I know the records haven't been all that dissimilar the last couple of years. Well, Mike Norvell is much is is very dissimilar to what he's been used to at Kansas. So he's got to get used to that, and they're trying to get him as used to that as possible. Because remember, he didn't have a spring. The thing, though, is you know he's used to being relied on. I mean, he was the number one receiver for Kansas, so he's used to the expectations. I, I wonder how how much of it do you think is them trying to either expedite his acclimation and, and coach him hard just so he is ready because they do have to put so many eggs in that basket of his? How much of it do you think is sending sending a message or maybe trying to light a fire under the other receivers? Like, hey, like, you know, I know one of those things where, you know, when people would talk about Mickey, like when Mickey stopped yelling at you, then you got concerned. Right. You know, so maybe if, like, they see the other guy getting coached up so much, that's going to make them want to, you know, maybe step up like a little bit. I mean, how much of that you think is involved? I, I No, I, I think it really is just them wanting to get the best out of him because they know he might have some skills that maybe nobody else does in that in that position group. He's a super senior. He's got experience. I, I think it's more about, man, you're not you're not in Kansas anymore. Uh, Who tweeted that, by the way? I mean, we had to. Whoever was the that was layout. solid. I don't. I think it was Ira. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's like you, it wasn't me. I, I would take credit for it. I love a good pun and a, lo, a good uh, pop. Well, is that pop culture? Absolutely. That, that Come, on. Come on, man. Ninety what? years old. Wizard of Oz. It's part of the fabric of America. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but you're not anymore, man. People, we're we're trying to win some things here. You know, we're we're not we're not okay going two and nine and being the uh, the the laughing stock of the country. You, you, it might, you might be able to practice that way at Kansas and still get on the field and still be a number one option. We want, if you're going to be the number one option at Florida State University for my program, this is Norvell talking, mm. you, you've got to change maybe some of these habits. You've got to get used to what we want you to do play after play after play. And again, he didn't get the spring. So I think they're kind of just throwing him into the fire. You know, he got that first day with the, uh, in the, with the second unit uh, the the second practice and since then he's been running with the ones and they they were hard on him in the first w- when he was with the second unit too not hard on him again just on him yeah and there we go. they were they've been on him the last two practices too but apparently he loves it he said that's the reason he came to Florida State he wants to get coached hard he loves having a head coach that's a, that was a receiver um, and he knows that it's going to make him better and he's trying to take it he's trying to take all the coaching he can. How about Impressive this? Impressive guy. Did you watch the video? I have uh, he, not. No, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's a, he's a, folks, go watch the video. He's, a, he's an impressive dude. You know, you've mentioned them being on guys. I've, you know, in the limited time I've seen practice, Austin Cox, uh, our uh, utility guy. What do we call Austin? Staff writer. Sorry, Austin. You yeah, have sure. a title and everything. Put on the business Well, he card, does man. everything, though. He's video and he's, he's yeah. yeah, he's doing, he does it all. You know, with some of the clips he showed from the second practice, I saw Coach Norvell and, you know, Coach Papuchas getting, you know, really, really, you know, sort of animated with, with the way they're coaching things. How much of it is a guy like Andrew Parchment who's been around? I mean, he went to, what, Northern Illinois, then he went to a JUCO, then he ended up at Kansas, now he's at Florida State. I think he played a fairly decent program at Cypress Bay High School down in South Florida. Can anybody really be expected to live up to the standard and these details that we keep talking about how just meticulous Mike Norvell is? Because I understand last year not having the the full conventional workouts. I know we're only three days into this, but man, like they're they're really driving this hard. And this isn't I'm not this isn't a criticism of the of the way they're doing things. Listen, you want to get you want to climb and all that kind of stuff. You you gotta you gotta go up some some steep inclines, if you will. Mm, there you um, go. Bad pun. I mean, terrible. I can't no, even talk. No, great, right now. man. I loved it. Thank, you. appreciate it, Corey. Um, I haven't been able to watch a lot of practice from a good football program, right? I mean, I, I watched what Taggart had to do, uh, and what, what Taggart, how Taggart ran things. Wasn't here for Jimbo. You know, saw towards the end of Bowden's tenure, and you still had guys like Mickey trying to hold the standard. When I was in Mississippi and Alabama, like I really never went to Tuscaloosa or Auburn or Oxford or Starkville to watch practice. I'd go there for games, but. I'm. I just wonder at what point will this start kind of clicking again? It's only three days in, so maybe when they when the full pads come on and it's a full full practice and everybody's out there, because man, that they're they are not going to adjust the way they coach, the way what they're expecting right. from these guys, and there has to be a point where they're saying all the right things to us, man. We should we should see tough coaching moments, but 
some of the stuff they're getting on these guys about, it's like, well, hey, man, th- these are these are things you can talk about in a in a meeting room, and like, I don't want to see this out of practice, and it's still happening. I just wonder how much longer you get to to kind of flush that sort of stuff out. It's not a program, it's not a culture thing. Uh, I don't think it's a culture thing. Am I wrong? So what what that they're still having to yell? Yeah, I mean, at like, what point do you know what you need to do at practice? You the oh, the, man, the, the, I, the intensity, I, look, the, yeah. the the level of focus you need to be as a player if you're gonna if you're if you're gonna play under Coach Norvell. Yeah, I think. Look, man, I, I'll just say this, and it's the only thing I can really relate to. Uh, you know, Jimbo was like that in fourteen. You you know, he didn't have quiet practices either, and he wasn't that a boy. Good job, hey man. You know, hey, uh, Jameis, great job, man. Carlos, perfect. That never came out of his mouth. Everything was loud, and he was doing that after a national championship, criticizing, critiquing, not very politely. I just think that's how some people are wired. Norvell is a loud, passionate dude. Um, I, you know, I don't necessarily think he's embarrassing anyone. He's not calling anybody an idiot, but he has a, he has a standard. And I don't. I think it's one of those things, man, where it's never gonna. You're never gonna have a practice where they're not yelling at these kids or yelling at these players. It just that that's not that's not how I would think. That's not how football practice works. Like, look, Bobby wouldn't do a ton of yelling, especially in the later years, but he did plenty of yelling in the '80s. Like, again, watch that video, the 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 documentary, Finding a Way. Like, he he's pretty energetic on the practice field, and he's not always polite. And Lord knows if you've talked to anyone that played for Mickey Andrews. And you heard some of those stories, and some heard some of the things he would tell, yell at kids, and tell kids. Um, I mean, it's it'll make you blush. And then he'd go hug their neck when they're walking off the practice field. I think there is you can be hard on these guys, and and I don't, and I also don't think that it's my point being. Florida State was the national championship winning team, coming off a of, you know they'd won whatever they'd won sixteen games in a row. And if you were watching those practices in the preseason of fourteen, you would have thought man he hates this team he hates these guys like they're not doing anything right and clearly they were still one of the best teams in the country and I'm sure those 13 practices now again we didn't get to see a ton of them we can see a ton of practice moments from 13 but Jimbo was always going to be Jimbo and I think Norvell and especially Norvell and Papuchas right like those are just the loudest guys out there Odell too like Odell doesn't take it easy on him he he you know he'll he'll make them go do it again and maybe say something not so nice if they if they do something wrong I don't but I think that's just coaches right I don't know that that means that they're not getting it and if they aren't like you also couldn't expect it in a year and a half right like this is a three and six football team nothing's fixed so of course they're going to be a little they're they're going to be correcting people uh urgently uh the first three or four days of practice so in your opinion you say this is more of a product of his personality and and less than uh, yeah, the level of performance you, by the yeah, players. Because I was going to say that when, when you when you started on that, I was going to say, man, I, I, I I'm not. I and listen, that, that wasn't a criticism. I'm, listen, no, I, I, I don't. You. I like hard coaching, man. I think that's yeah. the way. That's the way to, to correct. You're things, worried man. that this means this team isn't getting it. Uh, my my point is, I think they are much better right now, which they should be. They look much better to me than they did the first few practices of the spring. Much better. They look more in tune with what they're doing. They look in better shape. They're, they they play with more speed on both sides. I think they're they they everything about these practices to me. Um, I shouldn't say it's not worlds better, but I can tell to me anyway can tell a stark difference between noticeable it's a noticeable, noticeable, noticeable difference between what we saw in March and what we're seeing now. Now we didn't get to see any practices last year, so in the preseason, so it's hard for me to say how much better they are than they were this time a year ago. But if we're just going on how much better they look than they did just in the spring, I would say it's night and day between now and last August. I think these practices have been crisp. Uh, they've gotten a lot done. They haven't been sloppy. I just think the defense is way ahead of the offense. But I think the offense doesn't seem to be poorly doesn't seem to be executing poorly. It's just some of those guys can't block Jermaine Johnson or Keir Thomas. Um, but but yeah, I think overall, I, I, I even though the second sessions they're a little sloppier as you can imagine. But I I've I've been uh, you know legitimately impressed with the with the way the practice has gone so far. Shout out to you, by the way, Corey. Are you gonna maybe you know as all of us wear more hats in this day and age? Are you gonna maybe try to add you know talent evaluator to your resume or at least your business mm. card? You know, so our guy, everybody after practice, ask Norvell. Coach Norvell, 
on two different occasions about two specific players at each time. Like you, you can know it's like probably one of the greatest feelings in this job. I really think I'm, I'm being I'm being totally serious here. I'm being totally sincere is when you ask a coach about a specific player, specific play, and they look at you like, yes, that, that, that was a huge play. I'm glad somebody saw that. Better than like, oh, that's a good question. That's nice, but sometimes they just say it to say it. But who was it? It Was Darren? Was it Darren Williamson? And it was a parchment? Kevin, I, Kevin Knowles. Kevin Knowles. Kevin Knowles. Yeah. Your guy, Kevin Knowles. I mean, Kevin Knowles, I mean, just the name itself. Knowles, man. He's got to be a great player for Florida State. It's just in the cards. It's it's car. It's it's universal. It's karmic. Um, but yeah, ask him about Kevin Knowles because again, man, I haven't seen Kevin Knowles give up a pass. Maybe one, and one on ones. And you know, again, receivers should have such a huge advantage. They know where they're going, and they have half the field with no safety over the top to just beat one guy. And they're not doing it a lot, and they're not doing it all against Kevin Knowles. He's been really good. So I asked him about basically has Kevin Knowles been as good as he's looked. Or as he's looked to me, hmm. and he smiled and goes, "Oh yeah, we're really glad we signed him." And then started talking about him. And then the second one was about um, uh, Darian Williamson, and uh, that's when he said something like, "Good eye," or "You, you got yeah. a good eye." Because I, yeah. I wanted to preface it. Maybe I shouldn't have. It's not really nice, but I'm like, "Look, I know he's not going against the veteran DBs. He's in there with those." I didn't say a, a negative term there, but he's like, he's in there with the. The, the the younger guys, but it looks like Darian Williamson has taken a real step or something like that. And he's like, yeah, good eye. And then he said uh, he thinks he's been one of the stars of the whole team for the first three days. And I'm telling you, man, um, he's been really good. He had a long touchdown and one-on-ones where he caught like a crossing route and then outran Hunter Washington to the end zone and looked fast doing it. Williamson's a pretty big kid. He's got a big frame anyway. Um, and he, he looked plenty fast. He made a t- – uh, catch in traffic. He made a catch for a touchdown in red zones from Rodemaker. Um, he he he's just he's caught everything. He's looked really good, like so good that you think, okay, maybe he's the fourth or fifth guy on this team on, on the, in this receiving core. Um, and that's a guy that I hadn't really even thought about much coming in, but he's he's been really impressive. So that I remember the one time uh, he's six three two hundred by the way. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. he's moving. Um, Jimbo it was after one of the games where uh, Jimbo would do this every now and again, but it was early on. It might have been the 2011-2012 season. They had won a game, and, you know, that Monday we would interview him after, you know, he'd, he'd watched all the film. We're interviewing him again on Monday, and the way those would go, the first 15 minutes would be about, you know, the, the game that had just been played. What would you think about the offensive line? What would you think about this? Yada, yada. And then the second half would be about the upcoming opponent. But anyway... So we're talking about that game. He's talking about it with all the media members. And he goes, did anybody know what the most important part of that play of that game was? Can anybody tell me? And, uh, like, I think there were a couple people that said something. And then I'm like, was it the – it was Ty Jones. I'm like, was it the, it was the Ty Jones screen pass. And he, like, his eyes got really – you know, his eyes, like, lit up. And he smiled. And he goes, there you go. And he pointed at me. And I felt like my dad had just given me a big old hug. Like, there you go. I'm, I I made – I pressed Jimbo. I got the right answer. And I'm sure I said something smart ass. Like, what do I win? Um, but, uh, yeah. So Jimbo would do that occasionally where he'd try to quiz you or test you. And I passed it once, one time, Aslan, one time I got it right. Reminds me when I was in English senior year of high school, uh, Miss Sacone, she was a taskmaster. She was so hardcore, just, just stoic, all about the books, all about English, all about Shakespeare. And she was asking some question about, I know, we were reading some classical story and, and talking about when it was written and what was going on in the world. Like, did anybody know what was going on in 1789 in Europe? And I'm like, uh, I don't. I mean, and everyone's just quiet. And I, I mean, I, you know, I know when to shut up, despite right. the show. And I'm like, French Revolution. And she just looked at me like, you were the son I always wanted to have. Like, she was so excited that somebody knew that. And, yeah, that uh, yeah, felt great. But yeah, it's probably cooler when Mike Norvell does it to you after a football practice. I nailed it. It's on video, folks. You can go watch it. Yeah, giving Corey some love. Williamson's another one of those guys. He he sustained a knee injury. Don't know exactly the extent of it, but his senior year of high school. So last year yeah. he was only one year removed from it. You know, I'm the guy. I'm Mr. Like Health. Keyshawn, right? Yes, yes. I mean yeah. these these are. I mean, those are Put those guys in the same kind of bucket there when you're, you're pulling out dudes. I mean, shoot, Kier Thomas maybe to a certain degree, although I think he, he might have some offseason stuff he was working on. But it's it's I think we'll see a market improvement from guys like that that are one year even further removed. From, uh, Darius Washington's another guy that's probably going to fall in that category, I think. He was uh, coming off a shoulder injury. He got 19. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
yeah, there's I, – I'm really curious to see what things are going to look like when they do resume practice on Wednesday because they're going to be full squad practice. When I did ask Norvell about the way he split things up, he mentioned that he told the team – he explained to them the reasoning behind it. They were all on board with it, and he talked about how everybody wants the opportunity to show what they've got. And I thought it was a really, it was a really good response because the way they've broken it up, you have every bit of opportunity to go out there and make plays. Now, granted, if you're a receiver, you're not going to have the high level guy. You know, if it's Jordan Travis or Mackenzie Milton throwing you the passes, or if you're a running back, you're not going to have the first team offensive line blocking for you. But you're not going to be going up against Jermaine Johnson on the defense. You know how that right. all works out, but I don't need to explain that to you. But I, I think it might be a, a nice little benefit for them doing it this way because a guy like Darren Williamson does get some confidence probably built up when you string together a day like that. And then when you do finally go with you know the seniors and the super seniors and everybody out there, you're probably a little bit more comfortable. So really curious to see how much of that can carry over uh, when Wednesday uh, resumes practice. Where, I agree though, too, but I, that's a that's a really good point, and that's something I was thinking about as it happened. It's like, man, this is great for his confidence. It's just got to be, because I don't know where his confidence was after the spring, but it couldn't have been sky high. And then he comes out, and like I said, it's just three days. They're only in they were only in shoulder pads uh, in shorts, but uh, so take it with the the grain of salt intended. But uh, he was the best player in that building. I thought he was just he and he was consistently good. Um, so that yeah, that was that was really good to see, um, and yeah, so we'll we'll see what it looks. It all changes though when they put the pads on when they when they all go together. But again, he should have more confidence now than he's ever had as a college player, and now you get to see how that uh, what that translates into when he's actually going up against, you know, Dotson and Brownlee and Knowles. Daily stock report, Corey Clark, brought to you by Wall by the Street way, Journal. Yeah, that's right. I wanted to also say a little shout out to Rodemaker, man. He was uh he was good on uh and he's he's been throwing the ball well, and I don't think anybody would be surprised by that, right? Like he's got an arm. He by I, I would say he probably has the best arm on the team. Um and now we know he can do backflips and, and crazy tomahawk dunk. So I he's an athlete. Too. I still haven't seen that. Is that is that readily available? The the pig contest between he and Shubba? I don't. I think I saw it on Twitter. I, I guess okay. you could search for that. It was, uh, but uh, these kids um, use that IG live, and I think it like it disappears into the ether once it's done. Oh, but I'm sure yeah, somebody yeah. recorded it off their screen or whatever. I'll see if um, I can find it. But carry on. But he play. had he had a, a one seven on seven series where he threw three straight passes to Carter Boatwright, uh, one for like fifteen, one for eight, and then one for like thirty three, like Carter Boatwright three times in a row. Um, he boat racing that defense, Carter Boat Race. And then, um, and then the next series was the the uh, th- seven on seven in the red zone, and he went three for three with three touchdowns, two nice two nice throws in the middle of the field. So it was impressive. What was impressive to me is how quickly he got rid of the ball, like he saw it and threw it. Because again, he's not working up against the best defense. The, you know, these guys are some of them are walk ons, some are guys that haven't been here before or haven't played much. And they're you know they're just not they're not the starters. They're not the guys that are probably going to contribute a lot. So. Take that for what it's worth, but it was how quickly he got, how quickly he saw it and got rid of it, um, and that's the one thing I still really haven't been able to see yet from either one of the two main guys. You haven't seen a lot of see it, throw it, see it, throw it, um, and I don't know if that's because the the pockets collapsing or the receivers aren't getting open. It's hard to know, but at least for that one session, Rodemaker really seemed to like see it and throw it and trust it, um, and then of course they went to eleven on eleven and nothing happened. Way to end on a strong note, Corey. Carter Boatwright, <laughs> though, got some love uh, from Norvell. Talk about how he transformed his body. So, uh, stand up, Moultrie. I think he. I think he went to call quit. Seems right. Should yeah, look but he. Up. I mean, yeah, it was a. You know, he got wide open on the one and, and uh, got rocked pretty hard out of bounds by our man. Uh, I think it was Shaheen Brown. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's a big play. It's a good catch. So good for him. Carter Boatwright, Moultrie, Georgia, Colquitt County killed it. Never. Always you your first it, instinct, kids. All right, so where are you at, Corey? Where, where are you at, Do- Daily Stock Report? Is it uh, Travis? Is oh, it, is it Milton? Uh, how much I are would... you? How much are you tabulating things? I mean, you mentioned the seven on seven stuff, and I guess the eleven eleven on. It's almost too limited for you to put too much into it because they can't get into a group. Yeah, yeah. Is... I'm not, I, I haven't been able to tabulate anything eleven on eleven. They haven't done. I, they just haven't done anything that's worthy of even reporting. They just don't – like, literally, I think the last six times they tried to pass the ball on 11-on-11, 11 11, they had to tuck it and run. 
um, or the the play was blown dead because they got touched. Like they're just so it's hard to even tell. Um, but I will say that I thought I, I thought Travis was a little better um, on Monday. Um, sorry, Tuesday, but uh, no Monday. No, you're right. I'm right. You're get right. your get your days right, Clark. But it's it's you know it's marginal. Mm. It's you know it, it's. There, there's no separation. I, sh- I should say. So in what my do you mind. do then? Like, what happens if this is if it's going to be hey, man, we got, the we, whole way? Do you want to spoil it already? No, I, I think it's three days without pads. Yeah, yeah, it'll it'll get there'll be some separation. You'll they'll get it. Um, and, and again, I it's it's easy for me to say, oh, that was a bad throw, or oh, we didn't see it. We don't know what he's supposed to be looking at. Um, you know, we we maybe he's ma- they're making the right reads and the receivers are running the wrong routes. Maybe they're checking to the right play because there were some. Now there were some runs that are hitting. I, sh- I should say that they had a couple nice runs, like 15, 20 yard runs in eleven on eleven. So they did hit a few of those um, that might have been checked to, and th- that's a big thing for a quarterback too. So uh, you know, it's it's really hard to know. But certainly, if you're just going by the numbers and what they've done, the throws they made, neither one could have possibly separated themselves through these first three days. But I no none of us were expecting that to happen anyway. Speaking of run game, and then to double back to what we talked about a little bit earlier, last thought for me, I've never really been all that high on Jay Sean Corbin. I think he's a solid back. I mean, we've talked about, I've I mentioned, if, if anything, at the very least, he's shown you an ability to get you tough yards. He's been able to convert third and one, fourth and one. That's a huge value. Uh, but I, I don't know if he'll ever be like a 1,200, 1,300-yard back. Uh, but he's a guy that I thought has looked pretty nice, uh, at least physically, uh, in the limited amount of times I've been able to watch practice. And he's another one of those guys that's now two years removed from a rather serious injury. So uh, maybe he's a guy that can, can help make a difference while uh, this quarterback situation gets its, its thing figured out, I guess. so. Yeah, and he did say that he's the best he's felt um, as a college player. He said that on after the first practice, I think. Um, yeah, man, I, I, thought, I thought we saw some really positive things from him late in the year, last year. Thought he looked like a different guy. And then I think that's just carried over. He looks to be a little more explosive. Certainly not hesitant making any cuts or anything. Um, he looks good, man. He, I mean, yeah, he looks good. I, I would say um, him and Keyshawn have probably probably been the, the two best of the skill guys that I've seen so far. But again, it's so hard to judge. Take that for what it's worth. Uh, it's cool that we're out there. I'm trying to give you some insight. but You're doing a I'm great job say of it, it, man. But I, mean, I, I, I need say to be it. out there, too, I'll, and I will. I'll help out. But I, I do want to. I have to qualify everything. I don't want them. I don't want people listening to this to be like, man. You know, which sounds like Corbin's going to be the starting running back, and and Rodemaker might win the QB job. <laughs> like I, I try to qualify everything with with the con, give it the context. So yeah, man. He but I, I do, Keyshawn looks like the guy. Like Keyshawn looks like the guy he did last year, and that's a little more noticeable, easier to see because you get to see him run more routes than you get to see Corbin hit a hole like against real competition. So that that's but when Corbin's got a hole, there's a burst there, man. He's he's looked good. I lied one final thing here. Uh, okay. from 1 to 3 p.m. on 933 FM in Tallahassee, it's the Jeff Cameron show Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. On Tuesday, he's like, "No, nah, I'm good." Because he does right. seminal headlines with Irish mm-hmm. Ophel and Corey Clark. You guys are going to be live. So it's going to be live on our YouTube channel, everybody. War Chant TV. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Get your notifications. Hit the like button. Maybe even, uh, you know, post a comment on the social feed. Get involved, y'all. It's going to be live, Corey. What do we think about the strongest franchise in Florida State sports talk history? I'm not, that's no hyperbole. You guys are going to go live. How much of the chemistry? Not that you hold anything back, Corey, but you guys can cut and trim some of the fat away. You and I can do that here on this very program. Man, you guys are going to be live. I really hope Tom Lane coaches you guys up, keeps you on the straight and narrow. We usually do because Jeff's 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 pretty good about like he knows the time. So really, the thing that what you've heard for the last ten how long have we been doing this? Eleven years. Good grief. Um, it, it's pretty much as recorded. Okay. Uh, th- there's not a lot of, Hey man, can you, can we just start over? I think I might've said, let's start over twice in 11 years. Maybe not even that. Like you just, if I fall into a ditch, I try to climb myself out. You hear it. You hear it here on the show all the time, folks. <laughs> um, there, there's not a lot of editing. That's really kind of how it is. It's just, we know now, uh, hopefully Ira does that you whoa, can't curse. Whoa. Oh yeah. Yeah. You Ira, can't curse. There's cannon. no, there's no, I don't even know if there's a delay. 
There's no delay button. There's no dump button. So you can't curse. You can't bleep it out. So other than that, though, that's kind of how it always is. Like Je- the way it's always been was Jeff's like, uh, and we'll be right back with some of headlines, blah, blah, blah. And then literally take a breath and then go, we're back. Seminole head. So it'll be, you know, it'll be different actually having to wait in between commercials. Um, but other than that, yeah, it should be, uh, should be the same, sh- same show, buddy. I hope uh, there we go. It'll be live yeah. one to three, but it'll be available in podcast form. Like always, uh, where you get your podcast from. What should Hope I wear, the same place you got this podcast from. War Champ Polo. Wear that black War Champ Polo, buddy. Man, wear that thing I've been all wearing the time. that a lot. I, mean, I might have to wash it tonight because I'm telling you, folks, it gets pretty darn hot in Tallahassee. I don't know if you guys realize that, but uh, pretty sticky on Monday. I like pretty navy blue sticky. on you. I like navy blue on you. I think it brings, you know, makes the eyes pop a little makes bit. Makes the eyes pop. I might do that. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what the camera situation will be. Um, but, yeah, it, it'll be, uh, it should be fun. So, hopefully, you guys watch it. Uh, subscribe to the channel uh, and like it. That's all. That's all we're looking for. We're all part of the big war chain umbrella now. It's incredible. I mean, Gene laid out the. I mean, he's like he's like uh, the TV guy. We have a pin thread it says warchant.com's show schedule preseason, and it lays out everything. And you got Ira doing his hit every Monday with Jeff on Jeff's show, which is simulcasting on our YouTube channel as well as ninety three three FM Terrestrial Radio in Tallahassee. We're doing this show Monday through Friday. Uh, then we're going to do live shows once a week, probably Wednesdays. Yeah. Probably not this week, I'm guessing. Okay. Okay. All I right. don't know. I shouldn't say that. Maybe we'll do a live show. Yeah. This this whole the, the practice schedule is in flux right now, ladies and gentlemen. So we're we're kind of dangling out there waiting to know what we have to do. But whatever we have to do, we're going to do to the fullest. And it's going to be Corey, myself, and Ira probably uh, bringing you the best. Doing the question, the best Aslan, is uh, when do we go – when do we start showing our faces for this show on YouTube? Is I that ever going to happen? We do a live show. We do. What are you talking about? We do a no, live show. No, I know, show. but every show, every every show. We, every show, me and you are just looking at each other. When we get a video sponsor, because that's going to make my life. There you go. All quite right, folks, you heard it first. So. You you heard it first. Get us a video sponsor, and then you could see us every day, not just hear us. How great would that be? But dude, like, then it means I have to get like fully like dressed and proper. Close, like, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, sometimes I'm in close. gym shorts and just kicking around the crib, just relaxing, just just chewing the fat with my guy. CC, hardcore, balls I, out. Hey, but some people like to watch us talk to each other, buddy. They like to see that interaction, that engagement. I got you. Well, hey, how about you come over to the uh, the Midtown offices one of these days? We're uh, we're starting to things are starting to come together. It might be a little more inviting this time around. Now you got those cabinets going. I might, yeah. buddy. I got yeah. now you got that kitchen working. By the way, if you guys know a granite guy in Tallahassee, let your boy know. Need help with some granite, maybe some quartz, uh, some stone, you know. <laughs> All right, good stuff. <laughs> All right, we are done. Jeff Cameron Show coming up 1 to 3 p.m. Actually, no, no I'm no, sorry, no. Seminole Headlines. Nope. Seminole Headlines go. coming up at 1 p.m. Corey, get some rest. Get ready. <laughs> Come out guns a blazing, man. 1 to 3 p.m. Seminole Headlines live on YouTube and 93.3 FM. He's Corey Amazon. Thanks so much for listening to Wake Up War Chant, fueled by DeLuna Coffee. Come explore our world of coffee. DeLuna Coffee features over two dozen different blends. DeLuna's unique roasts can be delivered ground finely for drip coffee makers, coarse for the craft crowd, untouched as a whole bean, or even in convenient K-cups. Founded in 2014 by the Lemix family, Ed and Brett are FSU alums and boosters who are extending a special offer to all listeners. Use the promo code WARCHANT15 for a 15% discount. Visit DeLunaCoffee.com and check out their Facebook and Instagram.